Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jacob Restituto, and I'm a musician from Northport, New York. And today, I have the absolute pleasure of having Elle Winter here on the channel. Really, she's, she's done a lot of really cool things. I was looking at her biography. I was doing a little research, as I do. And she's got she's done a lot of very cool things. So without further ado, thank you so much for taking the time, Elle. Thank you so much for having me. We're both New Yorkers. Get We're, we're on Zoom. So <laughs> that is funny. Yes. Well, you are born in New York, but you have relocated over to California. Yes, I finally made the move to LA and my whole life I've been coming, you know, just since I was 13, since I really started doing music professionally, I would come to LA like every weekend or school break and, and work. And I wanted to get through school and, and finish that. And once I did, I, I moved moved to the west coast but i actually had moved right before covid and was only here a week and then came back because i was releasing my ep so i came back to new york for press and stuff and then i could oh, never go back yeah. to my apartment <laughs> shut down and i was like oh we'll go back in two weeks like and it turned into however many months 18 months so, so when did God. you finally get back there may 2021 wow. so seven yeah good for you it's been really amazing. I've been working with a whole new team and, you know, really developing this album. And um, it's my, my first full, you know, longer project as I released my my first body of work before COVID, the EP. And um, this will be my first album. And it's been really special to work on it with um, a producer I've known since I was 14, but we reconnected once I moved here and he's been just incredible and an amazing songwriter named Autumn Rowe and the producer is Kizzo and yeah I'm oh, just, I love that I'm thrilled yeah, that's so yeah. cool so f let's give a little backstory I did a little research you started you mentioned going in, in, uh, to Cali when you were 13 you started with Disney actually and you've done a lot of things being with yeah. Disney working uh, and being in some movies and then also now releasing your own stuff. So uh, how did you get involved, if you don't mind going back to you know the younger ages, um, how did you get involved with Disney? How does that happen? Yeah, well, I always credit growing up in New York City as um, you know the reason why I, I got my start so young, given I would sign up for acting classes, vocal courses, and a lot of times at these types of classes, agents and managers would come to end of year showcases. So. When I was seven years old, um, the acting class I was in had a showcase where agents and managers came and I ended up getting signed to my first agent and started doing work just locally and commercials and other print work. And then eventually I auditioned with Disney and that that is a story That's there. Wild. But they had support. After doing their program, the next big thing when I was 13, the years following, they were just huge champions of me and, and my music, you know, touring me for, for several years after that until like they recently closed during COVID, Radio Disney and had shut down, which was like an end of an era to me. But they, you know, they have been really, really big champions of my music and I, I so appreciate them really propelling my, my career. That's really fascinating that you say that actually, because I've heard quite a bit from the other side of the coin that people hated working with Disney. Oh, I, I loved it. And I really think that um, they shaped me into like the person I am today and my work ethic and how I prioritize and and my values, I think. So I, I really, I do appreciate it. And yeah, it was like my, I mean, I grew up watching Disney Channel when I was like little. My sister and I would say our names and you do the thing with the, with like a wand. And to have it actually happen was, was surreal. I actually did a TikTok series um, over COVID about like the truth about being on, on Disney Channel. And it, it was so sentimental to like go go back down memory lane and, and revisit a lot of those moments. Cause I don't usually like, I'm in such a different place and I'm thinking about so many other things that like to revisit that was really, really special because it was a special time. Yeah, not many people could say that they were on Disney, and then not many people could say that they enjoyed it. So I'm, I'm really it's happy for you. A lot of these haters, like Disneyland, Disney World, it's the most magical thing ever. <laughs> hey, I love. I can't speak on it because I've never done that, but I really appreciate the fact that you did enjoy it. That is really cool. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, that's wild. So from there, uh, you, like I said, you did. You worked with Disney, then you worked on. Uh, I believe I don't. Throughout your career, you've been on a couple like movies. You have an IMDb page, um, and then. 
Uh, you also, what I found really fascinating, and this is kind of leading up to your music and everything, you released a track independently, and then got a placement on on Good, uh, was it Good Morning America or the Today Show? Yeah. The Today Show? Elvis Duran's Artist of the Month, and at that time, that was, that was very exciting. I had just graduated high school, and I was taking a year between high school and, and college when I, before I had started, and really just delving into my, my music project and writing with new producers and figuring out, you know, what I wanted to say and just being more confident as a writer and everything. And I had made that song in London and um, we had finally released it and I ended up getting chosen as Elvis Duran's Artist of the Month, Kiss FM's Next Step Artist at that time. And it was really exciting to, to realize that you know, being vulnerable and writing about my experiences and opening up that way um, and having the confidence to do so could really pay off. And it was it was super rewarding. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's pretty remarkable. I, I'm you know, that's the dream for every artist to play on these shows or be on these talk shows or so. I, it's being able to realize it at a relatively young age is, you know, it's it's up from there, you know, so that's pretty remarkable. Yeah, no, it was it was definitely exciting and it definitely, you know, helped me craft the rest of my EP that I made following that that song, and just gave me that strength to be open and and honest in my storytelling because that's really what connects with with others and and helps people feel more seen. It's you know what I want to do with my my Absolutely. music. Absolutely, it's so funny when you're in you know wh whatever season of life it is. We sometimes think that we're all so alone. Uh, but it's especially in songwriting that's why I think these songs connect with people is when you people are vulnerable they realize hey I'm actually not alone but even the songwriter too we think that we're alone sometimes in some things and then we put it out there and people are like oh I've been struggling with that forever or that I, that person did that to me or you know it really helps like everyone involved so it's it's a beautiful thing and I, I think you know it's so special being able to again because being you might be so different from the people around you, come from all walks of life, you know, but you get together and can connect over this human experience and a song can really bring that about, that, that connection, because we, we may think we're all really different from each other, but those three and a half minutes or however long, 10 minutes if you're listening to all too well, Taylor Swift, can really make us um, realize we're not as, as different as we, we like to believe. Yeah, absolutely. So. What made you, you recently signed with uh, Sony, um, so what made you, you know, go over the independent route and then end up deciding to sign with Sony? You know, so um, the imprint of Sony Red that I had signed to, really, I had presented basically my EP that I had been developing after that, that single, One More, um, and they let me have so much creative freedom and loved that project and really wanted the best for it. So it felt like a really strong and good fit given they weren't detracting from, you know, my creative vision, only just wanting it to to shine and, and get in front of as many people as possible. So it felt like a, a really good fit and like it made sense. I love that. It's the best, it's super important, I think, when artists sign deals that the, the actual label uh, or, or whoever's supporting the artist actually any team member actually whether it be an agent whether it be management is really champions of the artist and really wants the artist to see the artist succeed rather than just you know trying to make some money from the artist or you know sign the artist for whatever popular reasons or whatever the case is but when they're actually champions of the artist i think it's super important no it's so important and music comes comes first to me so i really want to make sure i hold on to that creative control and be able to make those decisions with the producer and writer I'm, I'm working with so that's super a uh, big priority of mine absolutely how involved are you in the production process of your work so do you actually sit down and, and play things in do you have a producer that works with you yeah, it depends on the record sometimes I can come in with like a guitar melody or something and some chords and sing over it a voice memo or learn piano over COVID so doing that as well but typically we go to the studio and I'm, I'm working with an amazing producer Kizzo right now and um, we'll just all jam out and he'll start maybe something from scratch and we kind of get inspired from from that which has been really really incredible and this right now is 
has a real throwback quality to it and it's super soulful and uplifting and empowering which is which is really, really yeah. great so the uh, i love that in this and the music came out great i was listening to some of it it sounds really good i'm curious who your influences are who influences some of you in your music yeah um i love stevie wonder bruno mars Beyonce, Christina Aguilera, um, Madonna. I mean, there's so many, especially the, you know, those strong, empowered women who who send such a, a clear message that you know uplift and and just make me feel strong. Especially growing up and wanting to to do this, listening to artists like Christina Aguilera and Beyonce, Fergie. Like, I I loved these women and they made me feel like I could tackle these dreams and and do it too. So. Those are some of my, my inspirations, but I love a lot of music, so it's hard to narrow it I down. relate to that, absolutely. I, I, I told, I, Spotify, so I don't have a Spotify wrapped, but I'm like, I don't even know what that would look like. It's like so crazy and eclectic what I what I listen to. It is so funny how these, tra- like Spotify started the thing and it's the best marketing thing that they could have ever done because everybody posts. And I actually like I like looking at it. It's cool to see what people what people are listening to. It's surprising sometimes I, too. What was it? I mean, I wish I listened on Spotify. I'm so sad. I, I use Apple. Me too. I I moved from Spotify to Apple maybe three years ago, and I prefer Spotify. <laughs> but I just the family plan was better for Apple, and we had the whole family. <laughs> I mean, it's better than I used to. Buy the songs on iTunes, and I didn't realize like you could just go on Spotify and however it was. It's crazy, like buying an individual song, like, cr- craziness. I don't know what I was, what I was doing, but I'm now I hear you. So, being that you are from New York, I'm curious as somebody that has relocated. Uh, first of all, what part of LA are you? And I was just in LA about two months ago, and I didn't realize how big it was. It's so crazy. So I'm in West Hollywood, but it it is so spread out that like. If you go to certain spots, if they're so dense that you feel like you see everyone you know all the time, even though it's like huge, you know? Yeah. I don't, awesome. yeah, I don't think so. I didn't realize personally, so I don't think most, maybe maybe I'm just, you know, below par on this aspect, but I don't, I didn't realize that like Santa Monica or West Hollywood or downtown LA or uh, Venice Beach, those are all parts of LA. I just didn't realize that. No, it's it's so incredible. Like you can go to a different area and just be in a whole new scene, scenery and atmosphere. Like some days I'll just go we'll go to Venice and it's totally different than West Hollywood. Like I feel very I'm in a city right now, but then you can like go to another park. You're at the beach. It's just wild. Yeah, absolutely. So being a, a New York a New Yorker that re- relocated over there, what is the like top thing that you miss from New York? Being able to walk around everywhere. Like I love bopping around, just grabbing a cab or going on the subway, like super easy to get around places. I also don't know how to drive, so I just drive around here. <gasps> Did you, so you just never learn because you don't need a car in New York? New York City, I've never had to drive, so I had no need and I didn't get my license and now it's like become a part of me. That's like my thing and I don't drive, so I'm like too scared to, to get it. It's just a part of my wow, identity. Wow, that's super unique. Learn. I'm learning like in the next couple of weeks. I'm gonna do it. I'm reaching my limits. Like seven months of not having a car here. I'm like this is too much. Yeah, I hear that. It's, I mean, I I rented a car out there and I drove everywhere, so I can't. You must your Uber bill must be ridiculous. I better be like some <laughs> Uber special point. Like they should they should help me out. Can they sponsor me, please? Right. Hey, Uber, if you see this. I live in an area that is very walkable, so most days I'm walking around and if I'm working from home or just going to the studio all day, sometimes my producer will, will grab me and we'll go. So I've been, it's it's manageable, but it's uh, it's definitely not like a long-term solution. So, and like, I don't want to, I don't want to go back to New York. My mom is so sad because I like love it here so much. So I need to be able to drive. So eventually like I'm living here and in a house and I'm a free bird. Or you know? the the alternative is the music career picks up so much that you just have people drive you around all, to, all the time. That, that's true too, yes, let's <laughs> manifest that energy. <laughs> and then I can hold on to my, my lack of driving skills as part of, you know, who Absolutely. I am. Absolutely, 
Although you can never appropriately cover Olivia Rodrigo, Rodrigo's driver's license. I know. My, my sister and I laugh about it because she uh, recently started driving. She's four years older than me, though. <laughs> and so uh, laughing, like seeing driver's license and we're like, she's Olivia Rodrigo 17. Like we're in our 20s. Like this is this is embarrassing. Oh, it's all good. That's <laughs> that's such a New York thing that I think most people would not understand. No, it, it's like always uh, very, very appalling to a lot of people when I when I tell them the news. <laughs> yeah. The news. What was that? I'm sorry. I break the news yeah. that, I, that I don't. So you mentioned um, going back to fly, coming from L.A. or coming to New York to L.A., you, you got a whole new team. I'm curious how, um, first of all, you knew it was the right time to get a new team and also how you pick the members of, of, of your team. I think it's so important. And one of the things I like to do on this channel is, you know, ask questions that, artists that are coming up, you know, might have and, and, and might not know how to find the answers to. Um, because when I was starting in the industry, like there were so many things I'm like, how do I even get there? You know what I mean? So I'd be curious to know how you found or what made you th think and realize you needed a team and how you found those members. Yeah, I think like just starting off what you're saying for new artists, like for me, I think the the biggest thing is just to be open minded and it's definitely tempting to stay in what's comfortable in a comfort zone or whatever that is but as you know we can see with TikTok and social media like how you know quickly music evolves and the music industry changes and that landscape is is moving fast so you kind of just have to be able to adapt alongside it um so after i had released my ep and had been you know promoting it throughout COVID, whether that was like live stream shows in my basement or whatever it was crazy um i was moving to la that was like on my agenda once i was vaccinated like i was coming back to la and i i knew this was a new chapter and i was going to be working on a new album and i was like i need to just try something new break out of my comfort zone and and really um be open to to what is waiting for me over there you know my, my whole life i've wanted to to live here and experience working here the way i am now and i think if i had been tied to um you know my old ways as i wouldn't have been able to, that i've that i've had creatively um also just personally so i think just you know being being open to to change and adapting to what's going on around me really prompted that that you know, shift for me. Absolutely. It's all about seasons, I guess. You know, you're in a different season of life, so you got to, you know, have, surround people that, that fit that season. Exactly. Like a new chapter creatively and, and everything. So just kind of turning that page and not being afraid of like not knowing like what is going to happen and just taking a risk because having that belief in, in yourself is really going to propel you forward and whatever happens, like it's all part of the journey and yeah so how did you know that they were the right fit though how did you find or not even that but how did you find the people i guess is a even more in-depth question yeah i mean just over my like since i started at 12 or i mean seven really but like 12 to 10 years i've developed so many or like curated so many relationships that are so important to me and i've i've maintained them and um just you know reaching out and and uh, re yeah, reaching out to people i had connected to in, in the past and then making sure that they aligned with me and my my goals creatively um for the future so that's kind of how i i went about it just really like fostering those relationships because it is a small industry and and just you know making sure that that you you keep those that network you know alive and well yeah absolutely speaking of it being a small industry and relationships i see that you and jordan powers follow each other yes i just recently started working with her do you know her yeah i had her on the channel about a month ago oh she is so amazing we um i got connected to her through see this is like i worked with um a producer in london and then the mixer who mixed our record is represented by this woman. See, it's like this other woman, this manager, and then she reached out to me that one of her clients was coming to LA, so we all got into a session, and Jordan was at the session. So that's like another example of kind of the the crazy small world, like even if it was across the pond coming here, but 
anyway, we ended up uh, working on a song together in October. So we've been, and we've worked on it for the past uh, month or two. So she's great. She's so talented. Yeah, she's got a, a really fun personality. Oh, yeah, she's so yeah. funny and just a great I love working yeah. with her. So, so do you typically write by yourself or do you enjoy like co-writing sessions? I'm, I'm always writing, um, like in my free time, I'm, I'm at my guitar, my piano, writing songs as, and, and usually I, I do love collaborating in the studio. I think that's really important and bringing in ideas and concepts and having someone else also, you know, bring another component to an idea is, is super powerful and there are ways that other people can see things and just a, a change of perspective is is always great and I think collaboration is is amazing so I am I love co-writing yeah well. I love that so I'm curious because they, the, these people all seem to be in a web um, have you met uh, Josh Cumby or Mickey Blue yet M Mickey Blue and we worked with Jordan's that was the that was this is she's so sweet she, yeah. I'm so sad she's, she's yes, in London exactly. so I had her on she's she's a Jersey girl though um, oh yeah, but she's yeah. live. But she's living in, London, in yeah. London uh, which was very funny because I had her on the channel a, a long, like maybe six months ago. Um, but she, um, I, she, I, we were connecting through Instagram, and she sent me her WhatsApp number to communicate easier. And she's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in London. You know, I just so I just we were communicating for like a month before we ended up booking. This is a really funny story." And I, she, we were figuring out a time. She's like, yeah, I'm in GMT time, UK. I was like, okay. So as soon as we got on the the, the, uh, the Zoom call and she said hello, I was in like shock, I guess, because I was like, oh, I, I was expecting a London accent and we have this Jersey accent. And I was just like very confused as to whether, I was like, am I on the wrong, did I open the wrong, like, I, it's like it took me a, a second to calibrate. Because the whole time, it's funny, like being a, YouTuber, I guess is the term, which I've never really thought I'd say that out loud. <laughs> um, but what was it? Embrace it. It's amazing. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is. But I have these, the, the, you know, people that comment pretty frequently on the channel, and I just they sound like New Yorkers to me because I read their comments through my New York accent. And then when you actually speak to them in person or like same thing with Mickey and they don't, it's like, whoa, you sound so different than I expected. That's so funny. Do you think I have a New York accent? Or? Uh, slightly. It's not like, it's not like New York, or, you know, like, or it's not like a Staten Island or Brooklyn accent uh, or definitely not like a really strong one. I can't hear it. So I always ask everyone else around me, but everyone says like, oh my goodness, like your mom is such a New Yorker and it's super raspy. You know what though? You sound like everybody around here. So I guess you do have a New York accent. I wouldn't be able to necessarily hear it. You're just numb exactly. to it at this exactly. point. No, that's too funny. So what's the next step? So you, you just released, I think the last music video I saw you released was from January, right? Almost a year ago. Yeah. So what's the next step? So I've been album for the past year you know, since I've been in LA and I am actually releasing I announced it tomorrow but I'm releasing a Christmas song to kind of gear up for this next chapter and it really um is a nice segue into what's to come the the producer who's producing my entire did it with me and it, it reflects what's what's coming next so I'm super excited I've always wanted to release a holiday song and this is my time now and I, I can't wait I love I love first of all making and also listening to Christmas music every time it's come on recently I don't know what about it is about this year but mm -hmm. I'm I my wife has it on pretty frequently in the house and every time I walk in the door and it's on I'm like am I in a movie like I just feel immediately like yeah. I'm in a movie you're like in a Hallmark movie life is good it's gonna have a happy ending <laughs> I think this year it feels different because like we're finally able to celebrate the holidays. Like Thanksgiving felt like a true Thanksgiving because I mean I don't know about you, but I last year we just did Thanksgiving with our immediate family, like my mom, my sister, and my stepdad, because we usually do like a huge gathering, which we couldn't do due to COVID. So this year we finally got to all convene again, and um, it was so special. So this really feels like a holiday season, whereas last year hmm. didn't, didn't feel like a true holiday so the the christmas music hits different this year that 
is a lyric for a song. Christmas <laughs> music hits different. <laughs> it's true. I could have done that for my, my song. Next you know, time. Uh, what's, this, what's it called? So I'm doing um, a rendition of Christmas Baby Please Come Home, um, that holiday classic. And it's really special because... Jeff Barry um, wrote the song, and he, you know, he's a rock and roll Hall of Fame inductee, and he's written almost every every song you love from the '60s. And we met um, a few months ago in LA, and and really just connected. And he's been writing with me on my project, wow, which is super special, um, especially given this project has a throwback quality to it and a retro feel. Um, it even had before I had met him had sampled some of his music, which was so so crazy of a coincidence, and it really felt like the universe had aligned for us to to meet and work together. So he has been an incredible mentor, and um, I have so enjoyed working with him. So I wanted to do a Christmas song, and this is like one of my favorite songs. And of course, it turns out he wrote it because like what hasn't he written? And um, it's really special to me to to have him be a part of of this song, and it then does really reflect on on the music that's coming because you know he's working on it with me and Kizo and Autumn Rowe, the the other writer. I love that. That is, it's so wild to see how life does that. How you know how things work out. You know, we grow up listening to these people, and then you have the opportunity to meet them or 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 yeah. the connections like it's just it's so cool it's just such a surreal feeling wow what's really crazy about this story is i was with my mom she was visiting me in la this is a few months ago and and we were just looking for a spot to eat so we go to this hotel like right across the street and it turns out to be closed but like for for dinner so we're like just sitting for this private event and then we're sitting looking for a new spot to go to and I run into a producer I know who's like working at the event and he's like, why don't you just crash it with me? And I was like, okay. So we end up going and my mom, of course, like, yes, we're going to go party it up. I'm like, no, I just wanted like a chill dinner. But I end up sitting next to to Jeff Barry, this, this writer. And, you know, it's kind of just, it's like what I was saying earlier, like being open-minded and like getting out of your comfort zone and just being open to meeting new people, trying new things, um, getting out of the house and, and stuff like that. Because it really, you never know where it can lead, especially especially somewhere like LA. You never know who's in the room, what could happen. So is that how you met him the first time? Yes. Oh, yeah. stop. <laughs> For my party crashing moment. Yeah, it's wild. Oh, man, that's, that's awesome. I love that. That's so it's, good. It's one of the weirder coincidences to like ever happened that like I was just sitting outside that restaurant and saw a producer I had spoken to or, or met like a couple months earlier. I didn't know know him very well and he happened to be performing. So he just grabbed us in and luckily, luckily I was with my mom who's always a good time and she's always done. We crash a party. I would have been like, no, I'm, I think I don't feel comfortable just. <laughs> That's amazing. That is so cool. It's all about connections, 100%. So I'm super. I'm super curious about this. So being that you worked with um, Jeff Berry and being that you said he's written a ton of classic songs from the 60s and even this classic Christmas song, I have been trying to figure this out for quite some time and I'd love to know your input. What do you think makes a Christmas classic? Because there are so many staples that we have and there aren't too many, like a lot, everybody, everybody that's a musician releases a Christmas album, but there's not many new staples. Every yeah. once in a while, you get one, but like, on average, it's they're, they're these staples, you know. And I think one of the more recents that I found recents is um, Mar the Mar Mariah Carey song, but that was 1994, you know. And I think there's a Kelly Clarkson from early 2004, 2005. But like, I'm curious your opinion. Well, I think Christmas is all about tradition and and kind of all holidays really. It's like upholding that that tradition and that's what makes them so so special is the memories that you know correspond to to the the holiday so i think a song that's just like drilled into your mind during that time is is really special and and kind of why these classics never really go out of style and it's hard to like break into this space with a new new song new melody because it doesn't hold that memory it to it. it doesn't have any uh like sentimental feeling like when i hear i mean all i want for christmas is you now it's been like a long that's like a long time it's been out like that it's been out is, longer than you've been alive 
that is still and, I, and me actually more, more longer than i've been alive too yeah so like that's when you think of christmas like you think yeah. of a song like that and then it makes you all happy because it reminds you of being with your family or whoever whatever a present you know what i mean so these songs have memories attached to them so i think that's what really makes the the classics ever you know it's just hard to break through i do love ariana grande's christmas songs her Chris's and Chill EP, amazing. Santa Tell Me, you need to check that out if you haven't heard it. Those are great songs. I listen to them year round. Really? Thank you. Yeah, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> you know, people. Not enough time. I need I, more than one month. Oh, I compl- that's the worst part about Christmas. And I make it a tradition to write a Christmas song every year, and I've done it for the past couple of years. And like my recent tradition that I've been trying to do, the addition to the tradition, is trying to write a non-Christmas Christmas song so that it's about Christmas or kind of embodies Christmas maybe, but you, it's not like Jingle Bells, Jingle you know, where it's like it's on, you can only hear it in December. I want you to be able to hear it in, in October or March. Let me know, like send them over to me. I'd love to listen to that because Christmas appreciate that. is that music all year round. But you should listen to Ariana Grande's Christmas EP because it does really, like, it just sounds like a cool Ariana Grande record. With some references to like being cold and eating cookies and drinking like eggnog, but besides that, <laughs> I love that. And I think I'm gonna make a comment that might cancel me, but I think that Justin Bieber's OG Christmas album is underrated. You're right, Mistletoe. Oh, I love Mistletoe. It's actually like see like that one. See, you know this. And to add on to your point that you mentioned that how how it's all about nostalgia and all about you know memories and tradition. I wonder if, like, 30 years from now, we're going to have new music that we list, like, our generation that what we grew up with, like this Justin Bieber track or maybe an Ariana track that we grew up listening to. Because, like, every Christmas now, my wife and I put that that album on. Like, so that's, <laughs> that's, that's that, that, I'm going to stick. And then, oh, my Christmas is you and your wife. That uh, seems like time. Like, you got some new Christmas songs that you're writing, uh, Justin Bieber. Like, I'm down. No, it's You're, a great album, and it's true. Like once people get more, if you just keep drilling it in, like and it, every Christmas we're all listening to Mistletoe, and then twenty years go by, that'll be the the new, the new Jingle Bell Rock. You're right. Uh, who knows? We'll see. I, I, we'll see. I guess only time will tell. But but, I think also what catches on is like if people start covering it too, because then you have you have it re- come out every year again. Technically, like I don't know if you're familiar with the the, the group. Why, have you ever heard of the group? Why don't we? Yeah, I've actually opened for them a handful of times. And no way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well then you know them very well then. So they just released a cover of Mistletoe, like officially released it. So it's like, you know, there's it's That's starting. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. Like it's the covering. Like I even for Christmas, baby, please come home. Like there are um, so many, so many covers, Mariah Carey and Michael Bublé, uh, Megan Trainor, just like t- even more than that. And that's just like the top three, but okay. Next time I'm doing a cover of Mistletoe. So we just get in a little more, you know. There you go. And what's the one where, um, is it Busta Rhymes comes in? Do you know that one? It's Justin Bieber's album. I'm pretty sure it's Busta Rhymes. It's, I think it's, um, I, I want to say it's uh, Little Drummer Boy. Oh, I don't know. Oh, see, you're missing out. You you haven't studied Justin Bieber's yeah, Christmas yeah, album enough. That video, and it turns out like that girl that he kisses at the end is like a a kindergarten teacher somewhere, or some, or maybe it's Oof. middle school. And it went viral on TikTok. Like this girl was uh, the girl that Justin kissed in the video. I I don't know. Too much time. It was during COVID. Too much time to to find this stuff. That oh, I did that not. is too funny. But anyway. So- I need to I need to delve into the rest of it. Yes, you do definitely. That's your homework after this video after this filming. <laughs> um, I would love to hear more about your relationship with Why Don't We, or you know, that's clickbait. You know, relationship. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> I, um, so I when did I first perform with them? Oh, I um had done a bunch of different radio shows, especially after. Um, you know, being named Elvis Duran's Artist of the Month, the Z100. I did some some radio shows just along the East Coast. So I, I did a show with them at Six Flags, and I opened for them, and it was incredible. And then I was so lucky to to do a couple jingle balls with them the following years. Um, and they have such such a dedicated fan base, and a lot of their fans had become my supporters, which is so special. And 
I love their music and they're all such such great guys so it's it's great to perform it is such a small world man it's wild it's so wild it's a small it's the small music industry it really is my my dog is coming to say hello so (laughs) uh he's a rescue so when we rescued him uh it was perfect timing because unknowing of what covid would become we had rescued him march 14th we had been looking for a dog for months and it is so hard to adopt a dog like they really put you through a, like a, a real pro we had a, a house inspection <laughs> they had to come to the house and inspect the house and make to make sure we were fit for for a dog well that's so, nice that they, they put that absolutely. Effort in to make sure the dog is a good home absolutely so it took like two months for us to, to, to find the dog and we finally found him and we we loved him and he was so tiny when we got him um wow. It was, it's absurd, but he is a, a, a mix. They told us he was a shepherd terrier mix, um, but he, I don't know if, what was that? What type of shepherd? That is a great question. Because I, I have an Aussie shepherd, and I okay. love Yeah, so he has, he, he really actually looks more to me like a Ridgeback. I don't know if you're familiar with that, the Rhodesian Ridgeback. He's like got this uh, like golden color. His name is Bullet. Bullet is so he, cute. I'm pretty sure that 95% of the subscribers are here for him rather than me, but. <laughs> I love that. I would I would subscribe for the dog too, and you, but I, I love all dog content. I've become, I actually never really was like that, but right before COVID, my family got uh, Australian Shepherd. It changes you. I wasn't even supposed to know this dog, so I was, be, I was gonna be living in LA, but I had to come home for COVID. And I became so attached to this animal, and now I am the most dog obsessed person. Like I stop on the street, I see a dog, yeah. I take the photos of it. Like I don't know what to, who this person is. It's wild. It it really. Uh, I was you know I grew, I always grew up with dogs, so you, you you can't have me start talking about my my bullet without sending you a photo. So I'm about to email you a photo of this. Okay. <laughs> um, but I uh, I grew up always having dogs, um, but. Uh, we, when I got my own, it's just, it totally changes you. It's, it's totally, it's a totally different experience. So I'm about to send you. It, but it wasn't the same. I don't know what changed with this dog. Maybe I was a little older and I could really watch her grow and like, oh, it's so special. I just, yeah. I have my own. I love that. I'm not living on the East Coast, so I need to have my own little puppy. Oh, come on now. See, that's, they, they be, really become your best friend. So I don't know. Are you on your computer? Can you? Are you able to I, open? Oh yeah, let me get it on. I could there you go. Yeah, or here you go. I'll, I'll email you an even better one. Let's see. This I'm is look. here. Oh. I just sent it to you. Stop right there. And that, that was today. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! So that was bullet this morning, and I just emailed you what he looked like when we got. Did you see? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, this dog. This dog is the, must be the star of all your videos uh, because I never see your dog. Well, you want to know it's, something funny? This, let me tell you this. When I I went like started TikTok a while ago, but it really started like I, I dropped the ball and I fully regret it because it was it was growing decently. Um, yeah. But I, the dog, my I, so I started posting and then I would post about him every once in a while, and they kept being my best performing videos. I was like, okay, hold on a sec. So I was like, they keep being so good. Why not? Maybe I can get like, you know, free dog food if I start him his own channel. Like, the guy's thinking has more followers on TikTok than I do. How many followers does he have? I mean, not a, a he's got like 7,000. That's a lot. Uh, yeah, I guess, <laughs> relative, but, but I mean. Oh yeah, my goodness. Was, I know I regret not doing one for my dog, especially when she was a puppy. She was such a cute puppy. Like I love her now, but I don't know if she'd be as appealing. But True, uh, true, I hear that. But it's so. I'm off the dog. Well, these, I, yeah. Well, I sometimes I had when I performed at Jingle Ball like right before COVID, I was backstage and this like woman comes up to me. She's holding this dog. It's like all dressed up and she's like, I was like, oh, what a cute dog. She like gives me the dog to hold and like all these photographers come like take photos of me with the dog. I'm like, who's the dog? Then I look online after I get like, updates about these photos. Like, come on, like the dog is like this celebrity. It's like this dog with like a winter. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is insane. Stop. That's so funny. So, bullock and he has potential he does he he definitely has he is a they take they say you take on it your personality and uh you know if he took on my personality he's a funny dog man he's got he's an interesting dog um 
it's so sweet. Yeah, he is. He's he's fun. I there's a I think it's I think it's Luke Bryan, the country artist. I think um, who takes his dogs on tour with him, and like they like they're like famous, and like he'll bring them on stage, and the people go crazy because like they have Instagrams and stuff. The dogs, so like that's gonna be bullet one hundred percent coming on tour. Yeah, I would do that too. I mean, yeah, I wanted my mom to like bring our dog to LA, but I mean, she's like, no, she can't travel. She gets too nervous. But my how big dog, is she? She's thirty-five pounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's probably where. No, but it's more like fifty, I think. Fifty. Wow. Think oh my so. god, this is a baby. Super. Oh my gosh! And that photo, he was twelve pounds. Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, my it's goodness. it's absurd. It's crazy. Oh. Adorable. <laughs> so after this conversation you have homework to go listen to justin bieber's album and go get a dog yes exactly what i'm gonna do so <laughs> thank you i could barely keep a plant alive i had for six oh, months so, <laughs> okay well yeah, maybe maybe we'll start with justin get bieber. a fish get a fish yeah, get a fish maybe even a cat is easier because they like to take care of themselves you know what i mean yeah there you go that's that is thing and it's good to go yeah well that is true but you never know you could have started tiktok with this dog and you give it free dog food oh chewy could sponsor us could be a great brand deal never know uh that's amazing so christmas song is coming out and then what are we, where are you going from there and then i'm gonna be top of the year rolling out my first album which is crazy yeah but, that's uh, wild i'm super excited about it and uh yeah we're getting everything ready for that a lot lots of videos and just just exciting things ahead so i i really can't wait yeah that's fantastic i'm pumped to hear it i'm pumped to hear the stuff that comes out when's the, the christmas song come out december 10th okay so next for, well i'm well we're filming this on the second so i don't know when i'll post it but the 10th cool okay, go that would be amazing there you go perfect um so What's the best way for everybody watching this now uh, to, to support you and the things that you're up to? Yeah, I mean, following me on social media would probably be best and Spotify and everything is just L Winter. Um, and I will, I overly update all on new releases and new and puppies. New puppies, yes. <laughs> Stay tuned. There'll be a puppy or a cat in the future. <laughs> oh, no, that's too funny. I love that. Um, one thing I first of all I actually want to come before we wrap it up I want to compliment you with the fact that you are incredibly well spoken for being I don't I don't want to diminish by saying oh by being 22 but like being 22 you are very very well spoken I've spoken to a lot of people in these conversations and you are very well spoken so I want to compliment that secondly um, I like ending every conversation you know with the what is what you've been actually in the industry for quite some time and I appreciate that so what is uh, one thing that you know now that you wish you knew when you started off? I think that every move I've made, like I'll look back in the past and I'm like, if something, let's say something happened I wasn't happy with or, um, you know, it all like makes sense. Like it's everything ends up just kind of working out and it's all part of the journey. And, um, I think that's what I, I would tell my, my younger self. Like I'll think back on people like, oh, if I hadn't done this, I wouldn't have met this person. I wouldn't have been doing this. And it's a really cool way to think about things because I think living with any type of regret um, is just super harmful and unproductive. So realizing that everything is kind of like a chain reaction and like that butterfly effect is, is super powerful and something I, I wish I known when I was younger because it's super, um, it's just cool to see how things like end up working out. I completely agree. Everything works out. It really, really does. That's a great perspective. And the fact that at 22, you realize, I mean, I'm not much older than you, but you know, it's, it's just. How it's, old are you asking? No, of course I'm 26 turning 27 in a couple of months, but I just, I feel like an old man because I've been with my wife now for 11 years. We got married three years ago. So like, I just feel like, I just feel like an old man. What? You high school sweethearts? High school sweethearts. I love that. That is so adorable. Yeah, we, we started dating when we were in 10th grade. Oh my goodness. That is so incredible. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. That's gold right there. 
Thank you. So I dropped out of college uh, in my, after my first year, and I came home out of college, and everybody was still in college, so all the people that I became friends with were all out of college and older. So we hang out with all these, like, 30-year-olds that have kids. So, like, I forget that I'm not. So when I hear 22, I'm like, oh, this seems like forever ago, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's really not. So I, it's just too funny how, how perspective is reality, right? Yeah, no, I, I definitely relate to that you know starting at 13 i was always working with adults um and yeah. i would run home from school and like my activities after school on the weekends were devoted to my work and working with producers writers whoever it was that were like twice my age however it may be so when i say i'm 22 i'm like oh my god i don't feel like i don't feel 22 i feel like I'm, yeah that is Maybe. a great point you absolutely what was that last part? Sorry. You said I've made a lot. More, it feels like I've made more trips than that around the. <laughs> absolutely, that is that's very very true. So, you are absolutely crushing the game, and I'm I'm, I'm really pumped to check out the uh, album when it comes out, and even more pumped to check out this Christmas song because everybody loves a good Christmas song. I'm so excited for you to hear it. I hope it, it gets added to the rotation. Yes, you. you know what? Maybe uh, yours will become the Christmas classic. I would love nothing more. <laughs> well, if you could hang out for 30 more seconds, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody that ended up watching this and made it to the end because you guys are the true ones that made it to the end of the conversation. Whether you watch it on YouTube or listen to it on the podcast form, I just want to say thank you very much for t spending some time with me and Elle here. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Best way to support the channel is checking out my own original music and subscribing on whatever platform you're listening to. Definitely go check out Elle and all the music she's creating and all the things she's up to. All the links to her social media and everything will be in the, the description below. So have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. God bless and peace out. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Absolutely.